Don't let this happen to you. We heard about a couple who were married for 40 years. They bought a rig, and after just a week on the road, they were ready to sell it. We're going to share our tips for couples who want a full-time next. Welcome to our channel. I'm Paul. This is Liz. These are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And you definitely need confidence if you're thinking of hitting the road full time with your partner. As a matter of fact, Paul and I often talk to couples who really wish they could do what we're doing, but then they have second thoughts. They're not sure if this life is for them. Liz and I have only lived together for three months. Seems like 3,000 years. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Is that good or bad? It seems like forever, so it's a good thing, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> right. So the adjustments that we needed to make to be able to live together in such a small space are fresh in our minds, and uh, I think we have some tips that can help couples that might be thinking about this lifestyle. We're not claiming to be experts here, so if you have some tips of your own, please chime in in the comment section below. So we were just talking to one of the employees here at the campground. It seems that a married couple checked in. They had a beautiful brand new rig. They'd been married for 40 years, and the husband told the clerk, he said, <laughs> I'm done. It's only been a week and I'm ready to sell the rig. I can't stand doing this with my wife. We certainly don't want this to happen to you. So the first tip is compatibility. This is huge. I mean, if you're going to be living together in a small space, you have to like each other and have similar things such as diet. Yeah. The food yeah. you eat yeah. and uh, the music you listen to. Temperature? The, the, Do you yeah. like the rig the same temperature? Yeah. yeah. It's not a big house anymore. Um, Liz likes to meditate, and so I have to be extra quiet. And just even the same energy, like wanting to do the same things. I mean, if somebody wants to sleep in and someone else wants to get up early, if someone's more active, right? Yeah, yeah. How quickly you recover from arguments, it's certainly going to determine at least that day. And if you string a couple of days together where you're mad at one another, that's not gonna work out too well. Tip number two, you need to be a minimalist. It's really about less space, less stuff, and more life. But you've got to go through everything in your house and agree on what you're gonna take with you and what you're gonna leave behind. In my case, because I had a background of in the automotive world and uh, I like building cars in my garage, I left behind a comp an entire shop um, that, that I had amassed over the years, and it was tough. Um, obviously, I can't be building cars out here on the road, so I didn't have any reason to bring it along. But on that note, you need to really respect each other for what they absolutely need to have with them. So in Paul's case, of course, he's taking not one little toolbox, but two or three or four yeah. or five boxes of tools. And yeah. then what do I have with me? You have camera equipment. Yeah, I have a yeah. lot of camera equipment. And a drone. And, and Tip number three, each person needs their own me time. So you need to be able to by yourself, take a walk, go hiking, swim in the pool, or even just sit and read where you're not always with your partner. What works for me is earbuds. I put them in, listen to an audio book, watch YouTube, watch Netflix. Tip number four, how well do you work together as a team? This is a biggie. You know, there are certain parts of this life that are really stressful. So here's the big one that's for every couple. So imagine you've been traveling all day, you finally get to the campground, you're tired, and what do you have to do? You have to back into a space. <laughs> This brings most couples to the brink of divorce, right? <laughs> it's true. We were talking to another couple and she was telling us that when she's out there trying to help her husband back up, she becomes the she devil. She's like, why can't you hear me? You know, why aren't you doing this? And one tip that Liz had early on in the process for us was we use our phones as walkie talkies. She'll call me and I'll put my phone on speaker and, and that way we're not yelling out the window at each other. Right. And we're learning how to do it. Just know it's stressful. Tip number five, how do you handle the division of labor? There's setting up and tearing down camp. There's cleaning the house. This is something you actually have to do more often when you live in such a small space. There's more cleaning. There's definitely a lot of more floor sweeping because generally you're camping on places that are dirty, like as far as sand or pine needles, that kind of thing. Yeah. And staying organized, not leaving a lot of stuff on the counters because mm -hmm. there's limited counter, counter space. Yep. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's all those things. Yep. Yeah. And dishes, because chances are you probably won't have a dishwasher. You might, but... You do. I do. I'm super lucky with this guy here. 
washing dishes is kind of zen for me. I, I actually like doing it. And I'm uh, a lucky gal. <laughs> <laughs> it just, yeah. I mean, I don't like doing it all day long, but but the times that it needs to be done, I I gladly get it done. And laundry. Laundry. Yeah. Yeah, we share that one. Yeah. Right? Neither one of us likes to do it, but we share it. So. Got to be done. You it's, may be lucky enough to have a washer dryer in the rig. We don't. So. We, yeah, we don't. It's laundromats, and, and the park we're at right now, they don't have an, a laundromat on site, so you have to drive into town. So it's a half a day of your life, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Two, three hours minimum. And dumping. Who's going to do that task? Right. Nobody wants to do it, but it's part of it. And I firmly believe that both partners should know how to do everything. And that includes dumping and driving, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Driving's a big one. Yeah, on travel days. I do the lion's share of the driving, but on this last trip that we took, about three quarters of the way through, I was feeling tired. So pulled into a rest stop and said, you drive. Yeah, and I was fine with it. Tip number six. And there is no right or wrong here, but what's your comfort level with boondocking? Right. How often do you want to sleep in a Walmart parking lot or do you want to be out on BLM land versus how much do you want to be in a campground? Because there's amenities at campgrounds that might be important. Yeah. You might want a pool. Mm -hmm. um, or a gated entrance. Yeah. Fitness yeah. center. Tip number seven. Another thing to talk about is how much change are you comfortable with? Yeah. Do you want to move every day, every few days every week every, every couple months every, seasonally yeah yeah you've got to come to an agreement as to how often you want to move camp tip number eight you need to decide budget right you need to figure out how much money you're going to spend on these two biggies eating out and sightseeing so we as a matter of fact just went through that because we were going to take a train ride and we were excited about doing it until it turned out to be what like four hundred and fifty two dollars yeah for you know and it's like for two hours on a train that's the thing when you're in this life and you're traveling you may want to do helicopter tours train rides boat rides all those are expensive and they really add up so that's why a budget is so important tip number nine you need more social outlets than just your partner and you need to be more comfortable talking to strangers absolutely fortunately campgrounds are really friendly they places are. Yeah. tip number ten you have to be comfortable with a certain amount of uncertainty. That's true. In this life, you don't know what the next campground's going to be like. You don't know if the boondocking place you're going for is going to work out. Yeah. The good thing is, is that your house is on wheels, so it doesn't take long to move away if it's not right for you. Tip number 11. How well do you plan? Someone... One of you or both of you needs to take the lead on planning because reservations need to be made if you're staying at campgrounds. Otherwise, you can get there and find that they're all full. Yeah, I was when I was solo, I had scrambled at the last minute and paid 300 and some dollars for a week at a, at a campground. So as long as you're in agreement that one of you is going to plan, then you won't get into any kind of trouble. Tip number 12. One, preferably both of you need to be vigilant about your safety. That's right. And if it's just going to be one of you, then the other one needs to be in agreement that safety is a priority. In this life, you are constantly checking everything. Yeah, you, you, you're looking for bubbles on the sidewall of your tires. You're looking for cracks in the springs or, or your, your shackles, the things that hold your springs in place. You're checking the hitch. You want to make yeah. sure it's correctly hitched. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a big deal. I mean, it's your house on wheels driving down the road. It's a big deal. You also need to agree on a safe travel speed and on the number of hours that you're going to drive uh, in a day. There's an old rule of three that uh, is you'll hear often in the RV world. It's 300 miles or three o'clock. Whichever comes first. Tip number 13, one or both of you needs to be weather aware. You are super vulnerable in a camper. So you can have alerts on your phone or use a weather radio with an alarm. I will actually put a link in the comments of the type of weather radio we use that has an alarm on it. You are much more susceptible to high winds than you ever were in a sticks and bricks house. Uh, I'm sure you've all seen news footage of, of trucks and trailers blown over on the side of a road, and it's real. I mean, I, I've been in high winds in, in, uh, when I was pulling my, my bumper pull, and it scared the bejeebus out of me. Yeah, and, and not just when you're driving, but overnight storms that can pop up while you're sleeping. You really need to know what's going to happen. Tip number 14, you both need to be equally committed to this lifestyle. You both should be in it with both feet. Let us know your tips in the comments. 
If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next video. Which is all about picking the right RV for you.